Ciao, I'm Marianne Esposito. Today on Ciao Italia, cooking from the green heart of Italy. Ciao, I'm Marianne Esposito. Welcome to Italy, and let's cook real Italian. Aren't they gorgeous? Swiss chard. I knew you said that. I'm in heaven. Think about how healthy this is. That's for you. Sunday sauce. All 20 regions of Italy are fabulous. And every time I do this, I think of my Nonna Galasso because she always made it this way. You want a Goldilocks dough, just right. Who doesn't like basil, especially in the summer? Obviously, you have to have pesto sauce at some point, right? I mean, I'm a cook. Why can't I try it? You're the best. No, you're the best. People always ask me, what is my favorite region of Italy? And you know what my answer is? I don't have one. All 20 regions of Italy are fabulous. They all have their own individual cooking style, their own ingredients. And today I'm taking you right to the center of Italy, here, to Umbria, the only landlocked region of Italy. And Umbria is noted for so many wonderful food products but there are two in particular, legumes and pork. And that's what we're going to be working with today. So we're going to start out by talking about lentils, lentiquiae. So here we have some lentils. These are actually lentils from Umbria. And you can buy them. You can find them in stores in the States. And these are the lentils from Castelluccio, a wonderful plain in Umbria where these grow. And it's a huge, huge crop. So these are brown lentils. And we'll put them in a bowl. Remember, you can find them. And it says right on here, Umbrian lentils. I left a few in there. I better get all of that. So what's so great about Umbrian lentils? Well, you don't have to pre-soak them. You see how tiny they are? They're very, very small and they're very, very creamy. So you can use them right off the bat. Lots of other lentils you have to soak. Now, if you can't find these, you could just use regular brown lentils, but you may have to soak them. So here are my Castelluccio lentils, and then here are some other varieties of lentils. Lentils come in a lot of other colors. Here are orange lentils, here's green lentils, they are also black lentils, red lentils. Whatever you can find, you need about a cup and a half of lentils. And if you're not using these, you will need to soak these in water overnight before you can cook them. So there are our lentils. That is the legume part of the region of Umbria we're talking about. But now, let's talk about the pork. You know, whenever I'm in Umbria, I see so many beautiful pork places where you can get great pork products. But the major thing is the pork sausage. So around Norcia, which is a famous pork producing area, you go in and you visit the Norcino. That's the man who's making the sausage. And he's made it for years and years, so he has technique down. So here we have some beautiful Italian pork sausage. This is just sweet sausage, so there's no fennel or hot red pepper in this. If you wanted to use that, you could. So we're gonna be cooking this, but first we have to cut up some pancetta, pancetta, from the word pancha. Pancha means belly, stomach. So this is pork, bacon actually, that comes from the belly of the pig. And it is cured. It is cured and it's ready to use. In Italy, this would often be eaten raw. Now, I know we don't do that kind of thing here, but yes, it would be eaten raw in Italy, but it's also a great flavor enhancer for whatever you're making. So when you buy it, make sure that you are looking to see that you've got this nice creamy line of fat, 
and you've got really fresh looking meat that isn't browned or yellow looking because that would be old pancetta. So this is going to be our flavoring agent. So we want to dice up this pancetta. And I would never ever buy this and then freeze it. You just don't want to do that because it changes the flavor of the, of the pancetta. So you want to always use it fresh. And you can, you can find this. You can find this in Italian delis. You can find it in um, supermarkets sometimes. So it's a great thing to use in this particular dish of lentils and sausage. Okay, so there we have our pancetta. Now we need to add a little bit of olive oil to a pan because this is a dish that we start on top of the stove, but then we finish in the oven. So let's add a little bit of olive oil. You want to do this in a, in a stove top to oven kind of casserole. So I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil, not much, about a tablespoon because the pork is really going to exude some of its fat. And I'm going to turn up the heat now and they are beautiful. Okay, so let's get the pancetta in. Pancetta goes in. And you know, pork curing is an old, old tradition in Italy, but especially in Umbria. And pork it was usually, the pigs were usually slaughtered in the winter time because it was cold and the meat would be more well preserved when you didn't have refrigeration. So it was often salted. But now, of course, we can have pork products all year long. So January was usually the time when the pig was slaughtered and they would make sausages and other pork products. So we're going to put the sausage in directly from the supermarket, fresh. And hey, if you want to, if you really want to uh, get into sausage making like the Norcinos, in Italy, well, you can make your own sausage and you can find out how to do that by going to chowitalia.com because we show you how to make pork sausage. All right, so I'm going to put the heat down on that just a little bit and let those go while we work on the vegetables. We're going to use some aromatic vegetables to go with this dish. So we have leeks, we have celery, we have carrots, and we have aglio, garlic. So let's start with the leeks first because they need to be cleaned. So, you want to take off that end. And this top green part, the darker part, you can put that in your compost. A lot of people put it in soup. I'm going to get rid of that. And then we have to clean the leek. So you want to cut down the center. Sometimes they're clean, but sometimes they're, they're really sandy. That one it looks pretty good. You see, because usually you have a lot of dirt that's harbored inside of that. So I'm going to wash it off anyway, because we should really just wash our vegetables before we use them, and dry them off with a paper towel. Leeks are one of those vegetables that Italians love to use. They are an ancient vegetable, known as porri in Italian, and they're used in a lot of dishes that call for onion, because leeks are a lot milder than onions. So now we just want to cut them up. Doesn't have to be anything fancy because this is all going to get cooked down in our pan. And whenever I am in Umbria, I really search out the pork dishes. They make wonderful pork ragouts. They have not only wonderful pork, but have you ever had chingale? Yes, that's wild boar. They do beautiful wild boar dishes as well. All right, so here is our leek. I'm going to take that and put it right in this bowl. And then we have carrots and our celery. And one of the other great products of Umbria, of course, is the olive oil. In fact, every Christmas, the Pope orders his olive oil from Umbria. Yes, he does. So we have the leaves here, and we're going to chop those up, because that's great flavor that goes in. This is a great winter dish, but it's a great dish all year long, and it's hearty. 
And did you know that lentils are loaded with protein, lots of minerals, potassium? You could just eat lentils and have enough protein for the day. So here is our celery. And let me check on those, those sausages and that pancetta, make sure that we're not overcooking those, because we just want to brown this. Well, they're getting there. They should have a nice little crust on them before we take them out. So I'm going to raise the heat here a little bit. Let them go. Come back to this. So now here are our carrots. Take off the stem end. Trim them if you have to. I'll just cut them in half. Always keep your fingers curled, just in case. Okay, and then we just want to give these a coarse chop as well. This is almost like making a stew. Get rid of that. An oven stew with lentils and sausage. I don't know if you've seen some of our older shows that we've shot in Umbria. But one of my favorites was, of course, in Gubbio, when we did the Festa dei Ceri, which is the candle race that they have every May. The race of the three saints. There's so much history in Umbria. Of course, you have the wonderful cities of Assisi. You have Gubbio. You have Perugia, which is the capital of Umbria. There's our carrots. I hear that sizzle back there, so I'm going to have to go back and check. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So as soon as this is browned enough to my liking, I'm going to take it out so we can then brown the vegetables in the fat that's left in the pan. Not yet. Okay, so now we have garlic. You know, a lot of people think that Italians use a, a lot of garlic in their cooking, that it's a garlic-based cuisine. But you know, there are a lot of places where you don't use garlic, but this is one of the places that you do. So we want two cloves of garlic. Again, we're using fresh garlic. Now, I've spent a lot of time in Umbria, so it is a favorite region, but then they all are. One of my favorite cities in Umbria is Perugia, the capital. Beautiful artwork there. You walk down the course of Venucci. You see the fountain by the university. You see the great cathedral. And of course, Perugino, the great artist, is from Perugia. So it's just there's a lot of history there. And Umbria, of course, was named for the people who first inhabited the Umbri. The Umbri. Got to go back to those sausages, though. Okay, see how we're doing here. All right, we got a little smoke going. So, because these are going to finish in the oven, I'm going to take them out now and put them on a plate. They're not fully cooked. And I really want to turn that heat down now because I don't want pancetta to get too brown. So all of that comes out along with the pancetta. All of that comes out onto a plate. Okay? And that leaves us a residue of fat in the pan. Those are our aromatic vegetables. And we want to cook those down a little bit. I'm going to give them some salt and pepper. And after they're cooked down a little bit, then we'll put in the garlic. We don't want to put the garlic in now because it would just brown too much. So a little salt. I like to use sea salt. Much better flavor. A little pepper. Did I tell you that this dish is even better the next day? Yeah. 
because it absorbs all those wonderful flavors. So if you were, you know, pressed for time or you wanted to make it on the weekend because you don't have time during the week, this would be a great choice. Okay, so we're going to let that cook down. I'm going to put the cover on it. All right, let's work on the tomatoes. So for this dish, we want plum tomatoes. Plum tomatoes are elongated tomatoes that grow in the south of Italy, but they're used all over in Italy, of course. They're plump, they're sweet, they're meaty, they have few seeds. So, you know, get yourself some good plum tomatoes. And I just use this beautiful little tomato knife, which you can find in a kitchenware store, which cuts through the fruit nicely, see, like that. And you see what I mean, it's very, very, very pulpy. It, is, it doesn't have a lot of seeds. So you couldn't really do this dish if you were using, I mean, you wouldn't want to use a, a salad tomato for this. So we're just gonna cut these up. You need about two cups of the plum tomatoes. You could use canned plum tomatoes for this if you wanted to, but I think it's a much better tasting dish if you use the fresh plum tomatoes. So two cups of plum tomatoes. It's gonna give a nice flavor to the dish as well. The lentils and the sausage. And I have my own plum tomatoes in the garden, of course, so in the summertime, it's nice to make this dish because the tomatoes are at their peak. Okay, I was talking about Perugia, my favorite one of my favorite cities in Umbria. And Perugia is where the L'Università per Straniere is, and that translates to University for Foreigners. And the reason I like that university is because you can go there and study the Italian language. Anybody can go there. You can go and you can go for six weeks, you could go for two years. You can perfect your Italian by going to Perugia. And also in Perugia are some of the best pastry shops. One year I took a class with Signora Sandri and she runs Sandri's pastry shop and there you learn how to make the classic eels of Trasimeno because Lago Trasimeno is in Umbria, one of the largest lakes in Italy. And so I joined the class and I learned how to make the eels, a pastry shaped eel that is something that's served at holiday times and you find them in all of the pastry shops in Perugia. So it's really important when you visit Italy, wherever you are, that you try all of the local dishes and don't get so hung up on having the things that you're used to at home, like roast beef and mashed potatoes. You know, you're just not gonna find that. So we're coming down to the last of the eight tomatoes to go into the pot. I have to go back and check on my vegetables now because now it's time to add the, the uh, pork back to the pan. Yeah, it's time. You know, part of cooking is also smelling. It's smelling, it's not just tasting, it's smelling, it's timing, it's all those things. So now we're going to put back the sausages. They go in with the pancetta. And don't waste those juices. All that goes in. Now, I'm going to add some wine. Now, oh, about a half a cup. Any wine that you like to drink, you can cook with. I think you, you know that I've been telling you that for years, so don't go out and buy cooking wine. So any wine, so a good dry red wine would be good. Or you could use white wine too. If you were in Umbria and in Orvieto, you could use Orvieto Classico. That's a fabulous wine. All right, so we've got that in. Let that cook off just for a couple minutes or so. And now we're going to add the lentils. Lenticchie, lentils. Remember that was a one and a half cups of the lentils from Castelluccio, very famous place and we did not soak them. So I'm gonna just spread them in the pan. And of course, as they cook, they're gonna absorb whatever liquid we're gonna put in here. 
All right. I know what you're saying. They're never going to cook, but you're wrong. All right, so here is the broth. <laughs> and as many of these tomatoes as we can get in here. Okay. Okay. So, once we have all of the tomatoes in, or nearly all the tomatoes, they were pretty big tomatoes, I give you that, okay? That's about all I can get in there. Then, we turn off this heat, we put the top on, and this goes in a 350 degree preheated oven. Just like lentils are a legume, so are chickpeas. And chickpeas are an ancient food. They really are something that was a food that a lot of poor people ate, and it was a mainstay of their lives. And again, it's loaded with protein. And these chickpeas are from Umbria, just like those lentils were from Umbria. So these are dried chickpeas. You might also know them as garbanzo beans, or chechi, as they're sometimes called. But if you buy the dried ones, you have to soak them. You can always buy these in a can. I'm not saying that the canned chickpeas aren't good, but you want to make sure that you rinse them off really well because there's a lot of sodium in the canned variety. So what am I going to do with these? I'm going to make a snack for God's sake, yes. So here are dried chickpeas. They're hard as a rock. So you have to soak them. So you soak them overnight, and after they're soaked, they look like this. You see how they've changed in color as well? Also, they've plumped up some. It's going to make it a lot easier to cook. So here they are, soaked overnight. And then here they are, just cooked in boiling water. So they're, they are tender now. Yeah, you could eat them just like that. But we're going to roast them, because this makes a great snack. So the next time your kids are asking you for popcorn, say, how about some roasted chickpeas? So we want to give this some salt to taste, a piacere as they say, a grinding of pepper, a good olive oil, extra virgin olive oil, and you just mix this up. Mix it till all of those chickpeas are well coated with the olive oil. Now you could add other things to this. If you wanted to add chili pepper, turmeric, you know, whatever, you could do that. I like them just like this, with salt and pepper and the olive oil. Then you spread them on a bake sheet. Spread them out on a bake sheet. And you put them in a 375 degree preheated oven. And let them go until they're crunchy, nicely browned, and they are smacking good. Who knew? When I think of Umbria, I think of pork and legumes, because the region of Umbria does it very well. And today we made a lentil and pork dish for you. Remember, we started with the lentils from Castelluccio, right from Umbria. And then we added aromatic vegetables, we added wine, we added broth, we added sausage and pancetta, salt and pepper. And this is a delicious one-pot meal. And if you're still hungry after that, well, why don't you roast some chickpeas? And until I see you, Nella Cucina, again, I'm Mariana Esposito. Ciao!